everyone and welcome to part 10 of a Victory Garden for Maine brought to you by the University of Maine Cooperative Extension. My name is Lori and with me today are Marjorie, Cara, and Mary. In this video we will be discussing preparing your garden for winter. Cara, you have our first question. Now that the season is winding down I'd like to start buttoning up my garden. What are the things I can do now to help get it ready for next spring? One of the first things you should do at the end of the season is remove the dead vegetable plants. This is especially important if your plants have experienced insect or disease pressure in this season. Some insects and pathogens can survive the winter in the plant material left on the ground. A fall garden cleanup can make a big difference with managing those problems next year. However, when cleaning out your garden, leave behind the tall sturdy stems from perennial flowers like coneflowers and asters. Many native bees use hollow stalks to build their winter nests, and songbirds feed on the dried seed heads. And just as a reminder, if your fall garden harvest is extra abundant this year, check out video number eight in this series, What to Do with Your Harvest, for food preservation tips. Also, consider donating some of your veggies to a local food pantry. Your county extension office can provide you with a list of local pantries and community meal sites if you have extra produce to share. Be sure to call the facility to work out details before you drop off your harvest. Thanks for the suggestion. I'll have plenty of winter squash to share. What should I do with all the plant debris from my vegetable garden? Fall is a perfect time to build a new compost pile. We're generating all kinds of organic wastes when cleaning up our gardens and yards. When you build a compost pile, you're basically piling up organic materials that will be decomposed by bacteria, fungi, and other organisms. It's a great way to recycle your kitchen, yard, and garden wastes and create a rich, crumbly product that will improve your soil. Besides plant debris from my garden, what else can I add to my compost pile? Composting works best if you mix together materials that are high in carbon, like shredded autumn leaves and straw, with materials that are high in nitrogen, like fresh garden waste, grass clippings, seaweed, and kitchen scraps. When you're building your compost pile, try to achieve a balance of two parts carbon-rich material to every one part nitrogen-rich material by volume. This provides a well-balanced diet for the microorganisms that are breaking down the pile. Mix the ingredients well and keep the pile moist like a wrung out sponge. If you have big items you want to put in the pile, it's better to chop them up as they'll decompose faster. Whenever you add kitchen scraps to the pile, make sure to cover them so you don't attract animals. By kitchen scraps, I mean fruit and vegetable peels, coffee grounds, and eggshells. Is there anything I shouldn't add to my compost pile? Yes, don't add meat, bones, fat, or dairy products to the backyard compost pile. Also, avoid adding diseased plant material or weeds that have gone to seed. And lastly, be cautious about putting animal manures in your compost pile. Composting manure requires careful management to avoid potential pathogen problems in your garden. And never add dog, cat, or pig manure. I'd like to try composting. Do I need to have a compost bin? You can have a loose, uncontained pile, or you can keep it tidier by putting your materials in some sort of bin. For the materials in your pile to decompose uniformly, your compost pile should be at least three feet tall by three feet wide by three feet deep. How long will it take my compost pile to decompose? It can take several months to a year for the material to break down. Over time, your compost pile will start to settle and compact. To make sure everything gets fully decomposed, turn the pile with a digging fork to add more air and mix the edge materials into the center of the pile. If it's dry, spray it with a hose. This will speed up the process because the microorganisms that break down the material need oxygen and water to do their job. Your finished product will be dark and crumbly. You may need to run it through a homemade screen to remove anything that hasn't fully decomposed. 
you can mix the finer screened material into your garden soil, add it to your potting mix, spread it lightly on your lawn, or use it as a mulch to cover the soil under your trees and shrubs. I've heard the term lasagna composting. Is that different? Lasagna composting, also known as sheet mulching, is a way to establish new garden beds for the next year. The fall is a great time to do this. Sheet mulching is a simple technique that involves layering different types of compostable materials where your new garden bed will be. You are basically composting in place. As with all compost, sheet mulching needs carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and water. Unlike traditional compost piles, which use two parts brown to one part green material, sheet mulching uses roughly equal portions of each in alternate layers. So what are the steps to building a bed with sheet mulching? First, cut the grass and weeds as low as possible before you begin. Lay down cardboard or six layers of newspaper. This is an important step as a cardboard will smother the weeds and grass, so you don't need to remove the sod. Be sure to overlap the edges by six inches to keep the weeds from sneaking between them and water thoroughly. Add a layer of nitrogen rich material, such as manure, seaweed, grass clippings, or kitchen scraps, at least one inch thick. Next, add a layer of leaves, straw, or other carbon rich material. Continue alternating layers of greens and browns until your bed is at least one foot tall. Remember to thoroughly water every few layers to keep the bed moist. And don't worry, lasagna composting is very forgiving. You don't have to be exact in the thickness of each layer. The top layer of your new garden bed should be a couple inches of weed-free organic material, such as straw, leaves, or finished compost. You can always add more layers, as long as you end with this carbon layer. Keep in mind your bed will reduce in size as it composts in place. When will my new garden bed be ready to plant? A bed is finished and ready for planting when the layers have decomposed to the point that the original materials are no longer recognizable and it looks and smells like fresh earth. If you sheet mulch in the fall, you can transplant seedlings or direct seed in the spring. If you sheet mulch a bed in the spring, it is best to wait six months or use only transplants. Remember, whenever you use raw manure in a garden, you must wait 120 days before harvesting for food safety reasons. Personally, I found the hardest thing about lasagna composting is gathering all the materials. It uses more than you expect. That's an interesting way to create a new garden bed. What about my existing garden beds? Are there things I should be adding to them in the fall? Yes, possibly, but you should start by having your soil tested and fall is the best time. You can have a sample of your garden soil analyzed by the main soil testing service in Orno. If your results recommend that you adjust your pH or organic matter content by adding lime or manure, it is best to add these amendments in the fall. Learn how to collect a soil sample by viewing video number three in this series, Preparing Your Soil. Learn more about safe practices for using manure in your garden by viewing video number eight in this series, What to Do with Your Harvest. I've heard that I should protect my soil from erosion over the winter with a cover crop. Could you explain what that is? Yes. As you clean up your garden, you can protect your soil by spreading a mulch or sowing a cover crop. These are both wonderful ways to add organic matter to your garden and to keep your soil from eroding away. We talked about mulching in video number eight of this series, What to Do with Your Harvest, so this time we'll focus on cover crops. Late August to early September is the perfect time to plant a winter cover crop in Maine. This is a common practice among Maine farmers and gardeners. The easiest choice of a cover crop for a small garden is oats. The deep and spreading root systems of oats pull up available nutrients in the soil and keep them from leaching away. All you need is about a half a pound of oats per hundred square feet. Sprinkle the seed over bare soil, lightly rake it in, tamp down the soil, and water. If planted by the end of August, oats will put on good green growth in the fall. When we get a killing frost in October or November, the oats will die and form a dense mat on the soil surface, protecting your soil until next year. The dead organic matter is then easily worked into the garden soil in the spring. Or, 
you can leave it in place and simply clear a small spot to make holes for transplanting and direct seeding trenches. Leaving it in place helps keep weed growth down. Oat seed is readily available at feed stores and it's cheap. After you have success with oats, there's a whole world of other cover crops for you to explore. My garden tools have really taken a beating this summer. Do you have recommendations for tool care now that I have the time? Fall is the perfect time for you to give your hard working tools a good conditioning before putting them away. For me, by the end of the season, my tools have rough, cracked wooden handles and rusty metal blades caked with soil. To clean the working end of a digging fork, a shovel, trowel, rake, or hoe, first remove all the soil and other debris with water. A stiff wire brush or a putty knife will help remove stubborn caked on soil and much of the rust. Any remaining rust can be removed by rubbing with coarse steel wool. Finally, give the tool head a thorough wiping down with a dry cloth. When all of the dirt and rust has been removed, put a light coat of motor oil on the metal heads to prevent rust from forming. You can do this by rubbing the metal with an oil sock, an old sock filled with sand and soaked in fresh engine oil. Other gardeners prefer to use a bucket or wooden box filled with oil-saturated sand, again using fresh engine oil. The sand should be damp, but not wet. Typically about three quarters of a quart of oil is plenty in a five gallon bucket of sand. The cleaned tools are coated with oil by plunging their heads into the sand. Some gardeners store their digging tools through the winter with the metal ends buried in the sand. Either way, the oil soaked sand will last forever if you use it only for clean tools. This is helpful advice. And what about the wooden handles of my rakes and shovels? Oh yes, don't forget to recondition the handles of your tools. If a handle is loose, tighten or replace the essential screws and bolts. Clean each handle with a stiff brush and then sand away nicks and splinters with medium grade sandpaper. Finally, slowly rub the handle with a rag soaked in boiled linseed oil. Repeat the application several times allowing time for the oil to be absorbed into the wood between applications. Remember, oily rags can be a fire hazard, so store them properly. When it comes to cleaning pruners and loppers, wipe the blades with rubbing alcohol. This is a solvent that will dissolve pitch. Remove rust by rubbing the blades with steel wool, and then rinse with rubbing alcohol and wipe with a dry cloth. Then put a little oil in the joints and they're ready to go into storage. Lastly, with freezing temperatures imminent, don't forget to take advantage of the few remaining warm sunny days to drain, coil, and store your garden hose. So some things went well this year and other things not so much. How do I have a better garden next year? That's a great question. While the garden season is fresh in your mind, think about how things went this year. The best way to become a better gardener is to learn from what you've done. You learn something new every year. If you don't already have a map of your garden, now is a great time to sketch one. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. What did you plant and where? This will help with rotating crops to help reduce disease and insect pressure. Ask yourself some questions and jot down some notes. Ideally, you do this throughout the gardening season. What worked and what didn't? You learn just as much from your successes as your challenges. Consider what you planted this year. Was there too much of a particular crop? What would you like to grow more of? Think about timing. Would you like to start something sooner? Later? Perhaps a second planting? What about the weather? When were the frost dates? Was it a wet year? A hot year? Finally, do some personal reflection on how well your garden setup worked for you. Would you have liked more or less garden space? Did you fall behind on watering or weeding at certain times throughout the season? Did you need more help? How did you feel about your garden? This is the best time to start planning for next year while the season is still fresh in your mind. The seed catalogs will be here before you know it. Believe it or not, I still have energy left and I'd like to expand my garden. Is there anything I can plant in the fall? Yes, absolutely. Fall is a great time to plant garlic. Check out video number eight in the series, What to Do with Your Harvest to Learn How. Also, 
There are many annual flowers and herbs that you can direct seed in your garden in the fall. As long as the seeds are sown after several hard frosts, they'll lie dormant until spring, when they will germinate and grow. This method can be easier than trying to plant seeds in the spring when the soil is too wet to get an early start. Some of the annual herbs and flowers that do well when sown in the fall are dill, cilantro, calendula, bachelor's buttons, cosmos, flowering tobacco, and shirley poppy. And these are great for attracting pollinators. Make sure the ground is flat and well drained so rain and snow will not wash the seeds away. Prepare the seed bed well so that the seed has good contact with the soil particles. Mulch lightly with compost or other lightweight organic material. Label the areas you've planted. Next spring, after the seedlings have developed a few true leaves, you can thin them out to their final spacing. What about bulbs? I'd love to have some early spring interest in my garden. Fall is a great time to plant bulbs, and mid-September to mid-October is best. Wait till the daytime temperatures dip below 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Your bulbs will establish a good root system this fall, over winter, and bloom early next year. Most bulbs do best in a well-drained soil with a pH between 6 and 7. Plant them deep enough so they don't heave out of the ground in the winter, but not so deep that they remain in wet subsoil and rot over the winter. Plant large bulbs like tulips, hyacinth, and daffodils 8 to 10 inches deep, and small bulbs like crocus and grape hyacinth 5 inches deep. Large bulbs can be spaced 4 to 5 bulbs per square foot, and small bulbs can be planted with 9 to 12 bulbs per square foot. Planting your bulbs in drifts or clumps will give you a greater impact in the landscape. After planting and covering the bulbs with soil, put down 2 to 3 inches of mulch, like compost, bark, or other organic material and water. This mulch will reduce frost heaving in the winter and keep the bulbs cooler in the summer. Thanks Marjorie, Cara, and Mary. So to recap, when preparing your garden for winter, clean up dead plant material but leave sturdy flower stalks for native bees. Consider donating some of your harvest to a local food pantry. Build a compost pile with carbon-rich and nitrogen-rich materials. Try sheet mulching to create a new garden bed. Add lime or manure to your soil if directed by a soil test. Protect your soil by planting a winter cover crop. Plant garlic cloves, flower bulbs, and cold tolerant herb and flower seeds. Recondition your garden tools before putting them away. And before you forget, reflect back on the gardening season and keep records of what you've learned. More resources are available on New Maine Cooperative Extension's website and in the video description. If you enjoyed this Victory Garden for Maine series, please help us out by filling out the quick survey in the video description. And thank you.